Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Amazfit GTR2e. This is a sport smartwatch that retails for under 140 bucks, making it around $40 less expensive than the regular GTR2 that came out several months back. Despite the reduced price, you're honestly not losing out on too much features. In fact, you're even gaining a new one here, which is a thermometer or skin temperature monitor that can quickly gauge if you have a fever or not. Otherwise, we still have the same 1.4 inch AMOLED display, which offers very vibrant, punchy looking colors, sensitive to use, as well as 2.5D curved glass that makes the UI feel very responsive. It still retains the built-in GPS. It can actually map your location. Really the only difference, as we alluded to in our unboxing, is the regular GTR2 has 4GB of built-in storage, which allows you to place music onto it and use it like an MP3 player, even when detached from your smartphone, versus the 2E doesn't have that built-in storage, so some reduced memory. The only other exception being the lack of a speaker on the 2E. However, the 2E still has a microphone because it still supports an offline smart assistant, which allows you to do some certain voice commands like set an alarm or check the time without even tapping on the screen. Before we dive deeper into the software and performance, let's take a closer look at the design. So overall, it's still a very sleek and stylish watch in my opinion. Again, the distinction between the GTR, the R here stands for round, and the GTS which is square that we checked out before is really just the body shape of the watches. One advantage of the GTR series though is the better battery life and in my testing it's significantly longer lasting than the GTS watches. This watch here can last around 24 days of regular usage before you need to recharge it again and that is with some occasional GPS tracking and other capabilities like heart rate monitoring turned on and in fact I use this watch now for over a week and the battery has drained less than 20%. That's compared to the GTS2, which under the same type of usage, I had to recharge every five days or so. In fact, there's even a extra eco mode, which can further optimize the battery life, and it will only tell you your time, as well as record steps and sleep, and this can get the battery life up to 45 days, so over a month before you need to recharge it, which is crazy. Now you can see after a few seconds of inactivity, the watch's display typically times out and goes into this ambient mode, since it's a AMOLED screen, it does have a always on display function that you can activate. Overall, the watch is also very lightweight and super slim, as we also saw in our unboxing. The sides are constructed out of aluminum alloy, sturdy, but at the same time, it feels, again, almost invisible on your wrist, comparable to the experience that you'll find on the aforementioned GTS2, and it's a huge difference compared to, say, a TicWatch Pro that we saw uh, about a year ago. It's significantly heavier and thicker. Just like the regular GTR2, it retains two crown keys that you can push to control different things, including the top button that can bring up the list of all of your applications and the bottom key that can be accessed to find all of the workouts and sports that you can begin tracking. Now the back of the watch is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic but overall it's still very comfortable, houses a familiar looking array of sensors for the heart rate, SpO2 blood oxygen monitoring, uh, and in terms of the charging mechanism it is exactly the same as on the GTS series and other current generation watches from them so it's very easy to snap in and fully recharges in under an hour and a half. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the straps, of course, are removable, so you can customize these with different colors and materials if you prefer. Buckle is also made out of aluminum, but overall still feels very breathable and comfortable on the skin. Now moving on to the performance and the software next, so taking a closer look, it is the same UI that's powering their other smartwatches like the aforementioned GTS2, just on a different aspect ratio screen which is round this time. To change the watch face, you can simply long hold for a few seconds and bring up a list of the different options that you can jump back and forth between. Overall pretty easy to use and with the companion app, you can always find more watch faces and styles to customize the watch with. You're bound to find at least one or two that you like. In terms of further customizing some of these designs, you can tap on the settings here to tweak what the uh, elements are showing in terms of information. So if you want to change it into showing your battery life or calories, uh, you can actually further tweak this uh, based on what type of info you commonly like to see. So pretty good customization overall, and you can even set your own image as the background as well if you want to using the app. 
The next screen over tells you your activity for the day in terms of number of steps, times you've been active. I can swipe down to take a look at additional things such as calories burned and distance converted. And swiping over again will begin to take a closer look at my heart rate for the past day, as well as how long I was in the relax versus warm up versus aerobic and different segments um, of my heart rate zone. Next over is controlling the music. Again, since there is no built in memory, you have to be connected using Bluetooth to use this as a remote essentially for controlling the music from your phone. And then once over again, takes a look at weather information, which is synced once and it can record the data for up to seven days before it needs to be refreshed. Tells you your sunrise, sunset time, as well as the weather patterns for the next few days ahead. And overall, again, it's a pretty attractive UI. Pi score is a consolidated score, which basically takes into account your steps as well as your sleep and other statistics and gives you a score out of 100 to tell you kind of how well you're doing statistically. And then once more, takes you into a stacked list of different widgets or cards so you can take a look at more info at one glance. So this includes any upcoming alarms as well as the weather currently, uh, as well as the aforementioned pi score, your heart rate, activity goals met, as well as the SPO2. Overall, it's in a carousel view and swiping does feel pretty smooth and responsive. Didn't have too many problems here. Swiping down once takes a look at your quick settings, including a flashlight which will turn the entire screen white to illuminate some subjects in the dark. There is the aforementioned adjustments for properties like the screen brightness and there is a ambient light sensor on here as well so depending on how bright or dark your environment is the screen can also automatically adjust itself. Swiping up here will take you into your list of notifications Social media messages will be populated here. However, you aren't able to reply back to messages. There is no built-in keyboard. Uh, so that is one thing to keep in mind, similar to other smartwatches from them. One observation though is the full list of applications doesn't include sleep, uh, although sleep is automatically tracked and it even tells you things like how well you're breathing at night, the different levels of sleep. You can only see that data on your phone once it's synced over. But this is not the case with the GTS 2 Mini that we also reviewed a while back. It actually has a dedicated sleep tab that can tell you your past sleep in terms of number of hours directly from the watch itself. This is mainly a software thing more than anything else but I do hope that they can release an update to also bring that function over to the 2E's list of menus. And scrolling down, we can also see some additional functions like a stress monitor that tells you kind of how well you're doing. It's basically estimating that through the SBO2 and the heart rate monitoring and gives you a score out of 100. Widgets or functions, there is a built-in compass as well and it works well as expected. In terms of different sports and activities, there's actually over 90 that you can track from the watch. There's also a built-in barometer and air pressure monitor on the watch itself, and some standard tools like a countdown timer, as well as the ability to find your phone if you are connected using Bluetooth and making your phone ring or chime, and vice versa. You can also find the watch if you are connected to the app and triggering find my watch from the app. So overall, the list of activities, pretty simple and straightforward, but working well enough. Moving into performance, Starting off with the step count or the pedometer, I found that overall it was decent. And in this regard, the sensors are actually the same that they're using on the GTR2 and the GTS2. That is to say, I find the accelerometers that they've used here to be on the conservative side. That means if I've walked 100 steps, it often will say I've walked, say, 95 steps. In other words, around 5% margin of error, which I do think is acceptable. And because it's conservative, it's never going to overcount your steps. Overall, still good within the kind of margin of estimation. Heart rate monitoring is also very accurate, really no complaints. The same sensor array is pretty much used on all of their current generation wearables. So not really a big difference there. It's continuous, it's fast compared to the body temperature monitor, which is perhaps less accurate than the SpO2, simply because it has to be touching basically your skin to get a measurement sometimes fluctuate a bit especially if you're in a surrounding that's hotter or warmer so again not medically great accurate in this sense but still is an again nice secondary feature baked on in although one surprising part about the thermometer is at the moment uh, the temperature that you see here on the watch is not saved on the companion app when you sync 
the data over. Everything else in terms of SpO2, heart rate, you know, sports and activities, sleep is all tracked and saved, but on the thermometer function, it seems like it's only shown in real time on the watch. That is one thing I would like them to update through the software, but should be pretty easy to save. Like their other current generation wearables, it can also track naps during the day as well. So no matter what time you're falling asleep, it will count that as sleep and delineate between different stages, including deep sleep, light sleep when you're awake, and also gives you suggestions in terms of uh, you should sleep earlier, uh, maybe your deep sleep versus the population is too high or too low, and how to adjust for that by giving you some quick general tips. Really, the final thing here in terms of sports and activities, I do want to mention the GPS accuracy on the watch. Overall, when you're outdoors, it is quite easy to get a lock unless you are in a super crowded perhaps metropolis area with lots of towers, but usually if there is an open environment, you should be able to get locked within just a minute. And afterwards, I found the accuracy to be good enough for a smartwatch. Maybe it's not going to 100% match what you can find from a more professional Garmin or more expensive GPS watch, but for casual tracking, certainly didn't have any problems. So all of these information is continuously tracked during the session and then saved over for you to analyze. Aside from changing your goals, such as how many steps you want to walk, as well as your profile in the settings, you can also download additional watch faces. So giving you a quick peek here, we saw this briefly in our unboxing, but here's a closer look as, of some different options that you can find. And the watch has enough storage actually to hold around 10 different faces on it um, at a time. And then when the memory is full, you can always replace existing watch faces with new ones. Finally, talking about the voice command function. So there's an offline control, which allows you to open up certain applications just by saying its name or adjusting things like the screen brightness or even the volume levels. So here's a quick demo. Open alarm. And you can see here that it's recognized that and working quite well, again, if you're maybe wearing gloves or it's harder to tap on the screen itself. The watch can also be customized depending on if you want to wear it on your left or right wrist. Both of those can be set up and you can even access the watch in a different wearing direction. So for example, if you want to tap on the left button, what that means is you can even flip the watch over like this and you can still wear it. It will just flip the screen around like that completely depending on your preferences. So it gives you a lot of flexibility that you can play around with. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Amazfit GTR2e. Again, for this price range, I do think it's a very competitive sports smartwatch, a great refresh from Huami, which is the company behind it, a subsidiary of Xiaomi. And again, this thing really specializes in getting a easy to use smartwatch. It doesn't pack, say, the most features in the world, but it handles sports tracking very well. It's super slim and lightweight weight but still feels well constructed thanks to the metal rail and as well as the very impressive battery life here perhaps the best asset of this watch uh, the fact that it can last you for pretty much a month of regular usage before you need to recharge it again is just crazy it also looks very attractive from a design perspective nice and slim everything feels responsive and easy to control and if you, all you need is something basic for tracking your sports for runs as well as some basic things like notifications during the day i think this thing will more than satisfy your needs. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Review. That's been the GTR2E.